Russell, you might have forgot to unplug something. Good afternoon, guys. What is going on? So, no word back on the AC on the 08 yet. Fingers crossed, it should be done here shortly. Then we can go run and get that and continue on with it the rest of the day. So, been reading through the last couple uh, comments. Uh, a lot of people were commenting about the throttle position sensor, uh, about deleting it. Uh, DNR Customs making an awesome kit. Uh, really like uh, Derek and everything he's doing out there. Uh, we run all of his traction bar kits on pretty much all of our trucks. Uh, so, we might need to get one for the first end. But he also makes a uh, basically a TPS delete kit which would go great with the rest of the Greg A deletes that we got going on here. But uh, I did want to just test the uh, TPS voltage to make sure it's not completely out of adjustment, which uh, I've actually already started to do and it is way out of adjustment. So I'm gonna go over that procedure with you guys. Uh, I wasn't joking when I said I really didn't know anything about these first gens, the VE pumps, all that stuff. So uh, we're still learning as we're going. You guys are being awesome and I can't thank you enough for all the uh, help in the comments section uh, when we do have an issue. So I'm glad that uh, it seems to be working out. Uh, I can I can share common rail information with you guys and you guys can learn and also share some 12 off stuff with me so let me show you what we going on what we have going on so far here what you're gonna need is a handy dandy uh, voltmeter which Greg is also not a fan of ohms and resistance and voltage are not Greg's specialty whatsoever but I can leave my voltmeter on volts and then test volts so that is this is a pretty simple procedure so uh, got the uh, even though it's got a little red thing I couldn't find the black alligator clip so got the black hooked up to the black on the battery uh, what you're gonna need to do this is your throttle position sensor right here on top of the VE pumps for automatic trucks uh, this controls the overdrive the three to four shift upshift and downshift uh, on this truck. It doesn't do a whole lot else, that's why a lot of people say you can uh, delete it and put a manual switch uh, for your overdrive if this goes bad. Apparently this is a pretty expensive sensor, so people just end up deleting it. The DNR Customs kit's about 50 bucks. So uh, what you're gonna need to do is tap in to uh, the middle wire here. I actually took the uh, rubber grommet right out of it because I was having a hard time getting this pin in the proper spot. So uh, put that right in the middle wire here while it's still plugged in got to have the key on in the truck and what you will see here turn our little button on okay just confirm with the battery that we have 12 volts and what you're going to do is put the camera in the right spot touch that there now this is supposed to read around roughly one and we have 0.4. Actually, actually, I gotta go check this. I'm not even sure on the specs. I think it's supposed to be 0.5 to 1. I'm not sure. I thought it was reading 4 before. Let's double check this. Alrighty, so the actual spec is supposed to be, like I said, it's supposed to be around 1 volt at idle. Uh, we did actually adjust ours. Uh, what you're gonna need to do too is you can tell... I can't do both at one time here, of course. Here we go, I got that. Got that hanging up there. Uh, so the other thing that you want to try and do is when moving this, you can tell if you have a faulty throttle position sensor if you get uh, readings that are jumpy all over the place. Uh, it needs to be a smooth transition. So I'm just going to tip back on the throttle a little bit here. You can see the numbers are going up nice and smooth. Looks like we max out a little bit around four before it was like three it keeps it keeps changing every time I do it a little bit uh, go back and we are at 1.3 so the way to adjust this is a little 10 millimeter nut down here right underneath the throttle position sensor and then you're gonna move this one way or the other while the voltmeter is still hooked up you can see I'm gonna move this and that's going to change that just ever so slightly. Take that off. Do a little check again. About 3.8, which is what I believe everybody's saying. Snap it back. Goes back to 1 volt. So it was at 0.4, so it was still quite a bit low. Uh, unfortunately, because uh, the rear end is getting prepped for Russell to weld, uh, we can't go drive it and confirm that. But 
Uh, I'm happy that we are checking this first. This is obviously free. Uh, if this doesn't fix it, I probably will go with the DNR, uh, you know, TPS delete. Do some more Greg A deletes on this thing. So stay tuned to see if our overdrive ever comes back or if it self deleted itself. Alrighty, guys, just got the call that the 08 is done. AC is blowing colder than the Arctic Circle, and we are headed on our way to pick it up. Uh, we don't even have a ride because the wife is dropping one of the dogs off to go get uh, some vet work done, and she's not around. So we're gonna go, we're actually gonna leave the Ranger there, grab the 08, head back to the house, get everything loaded up, try and get that clunker over to Russell's house, uh, and then we'll see what time it is, how far we get. It's already half past a freckle here. Uh, it's about 5.30, so by the time we get back and blah, 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 we'll see, but I'm excited. I really don't mind not having air conditioning too much, uh, except for when it's super, super humid and going to events and the long trips. Right now, it's pretty nice. It's only like 75, 80-ish. You know, I could roll the windows down all day. I mean, I can't talk to you guys while we're doing that, but uh, when it's humid, it's it sucks. It really sucks. So uh, I'm glad that it's bad when the Ranger has super cold AC and your nice uh, tow rig doesn't have AC. So I'm glad we got that fixed. Uh, supposedly there was just tons and tons of crap coming out of when he flushed it out. So that's about it, boys. Next time you see me, we'll be in the 08. And we are back in the 08. So I'll go over everything with you guys when we get back home later on, whenever. But it's cold in here. I'm about to I'm about to put a jacket on. Uh, it's so cold in here. But uh, that's about it. AC's done. AC's fixed. We can now take on those 90 degree days when we're towing the race truck around and not sweat our butt off. So headed back to the house now, and we will get the first gen loaded up. And of course, driving home, what does it look like? Looks like rain. Yay. And there it is. You can hear it starting to rain. What a bunch of crap. And of course, because it was sunny out when I left, the stack is uncovered. Oh man, poor baby, poor baby. Oh shit, boys, it's freaking hailing out, boys. Can you see it? Holy shit. Oh. What a bunch of crap. We are completely soaked. Oh. This is what happens when you try and get stuff done. And somebody even commented in the comments, I think it might have even been today, it rains every single episode. And I think it does. It's ridiculous. wondering what happens when rain gets in your stack. Oh boy, this is probably not going to be pretty. Alrighty, that actually was not too bad. Thank you. 
course, the camera is getting soaked. Let's go! Of course, literally, as soon as we get done, it's beautiful out. Is there any time that you do not want me to come over with this thing? <laughs> uh, every time of the day. Ah, I just didn't want to interrupt family dinner time. Yeah, we just finished up. So is now okay or wait a little bit? Yeah, no, that works. <laughs> All right, see ya. Later. All righty, boys, you heard him. We are off here shortly with the Greg A rear diff fluid delete. It is extremely nice out now. Okay, it looks like we got a little bit of gear oil here. Oh, snap. Looks like we didn't get it all out, boys. She's still coming out. So before we get started here, I know there's going to be tons of people worried about the rear getting driven without any fluid in it. Where we park the trailer and where we're going to drive to Russell's is literally, I could throw a baseball and hit his window. So I'm going to go slow. It's not going to be a problem. Ah, no buzzer. Power windows. Of course, the camera's dying, and I didn't bring a spare battery. Son of a gun. All right, we're going slow. We'll even put our hazards on. See, look at that. We're already there. He's already giving me the finger. What a rude person. Russell! You might have forgot to unplug something. I left the pump on, huh? I unplugged here. I don't know if yeah, I... that's good. Well, I guess we're on cleanup duty now. Yeah, I was filling up that one to feed the fuge. Damn veggie garage over here. Wow, this is horrible. This is horrible. Look at all that wasted money. That's like 50 miles. 50 miles. We better get it before it goes all out in your driveway. Greg, Five minutes later. Yeah. Looks a little better. Only Got four gallons lost. Greg A. Spill Delete. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, we were going to do a little bit of progress tonight and come back and finish tomorrow, but... The garage has a hazmat situation. Greg A. Mop job. <laughs> On it. Sweep it up. Hunter got, Hunter got a little french fry grease over there. You go puppy. Well, guys, Russell's floor is now somewhat clean. We are now headed home. Uh, it is about 8.30, so uh, where did the day go? Uh, but we're gonna hit it again hard tomorrow. I will catch up with you guys when we get back home.
All righty. Back home yet again. I was actually uh, right in the middle of getting some footage uh, before the battery died of how well uh, this 6.7 truck with HPP EFI Live drives. The trailer itself weighs about 7,500 pounds. Uh, this thing is an animal. It, it You literally cannot even tell it's behind you. It drives, I mean, I'm on Tune 5 too, I, I mean, Tune 5, I mean, we just Greg A Tune 5 the whole damn thing, so. Um, Literally before I had the HPP EFI Live Tunes, I had a Minimax way, way previous to all the bands and all that other stuff. So it was a uh, off-road H&S Minimax, and it was awesome. When I first had this truck, it was like the cool, I mean, it had great power, great driving. Uh, I was happy with it. Over time, I kind of was like, eh, I mean, it's driving okay. Like, it wasn't like the best. Um, and I was really debating on going with EFI Live. It took me... You know, like a year or two, because I, you know, the money to switch, is it really worth it? So if you're in that same position, if you don't have EFI Live um, now in a vehicle that is capable of having EFI Live, basically, uh, what is it, 06 and up Cummins, uh, especially from our boys HPP uh, through Mikey G, our parts man, uh, get with him. Seriously, it is worth every penny. When I drive this thing now, I have never ever been so much in love with driving a truck again like i was like i mean i was over this thing i was like you know what like maybe i'll look at something new you know like i don't know i'm just kind of over it and got the new tunes in it and let me tell you whole new truck whole new truck so if you're debating stop wasting time coming from greg a stop wasting time in the description right down here mikey g call him up get some hpp tunes for your truck i promise you you will not regret it a hundred percent but anyway guys uh no boost back tomorrow to give us a hand uh we got a whole lot of stuff planned for tomorrow as well so make sure you come back tomorrow make sure you subscribe make sure you're liking the videos make sure just do it just do it greg a told you to do it just do it thank you guys so much for watching i will see you guys tomorrow see you